All right, so Frank Warren announced a couple of days ago that he was doing another Magnificent Seven. Now, he's done a few this year. In fact, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think all the Magnificent Sevens, apart from one, which was in Manchester, which was around about this time last year, was the original one. The other two have been in Birmingham. Now, you want to correct me on that if I'm wrong, but I think they've been in Birmingham in the Midlands. Now, this one that he has coming up in December is in the Wembley Arena, the OVO. I think it's called the OVO Arena anyway in Wembley, Wembley Park. And this is the first Magnificent Seven he will have done in London. And sticking to Magnificent Seven, you know, that's what he calls them. It's a brilliant undercard. It's a brilliant card, it's a brilliant undercard. The main event is a main event you wanna watch. Brad Pauls versus Denzel Bentley. I would assume Bentley's British title is on the line, it is. And I love that fight because Bentley lost to Nathan Heaney. He's rebuilt himself and now he's challenging Brad Pauls, who actually beat Nick and Heaney last time around. And that was on a Magnificent Seven. And it was an amazing fight. It was brilliant. It was really, really entertaining. And I think this fight is going to be really good. It's going to be interesting to see because the winner really should be looking at world title level. And to be fair, there's probably a... To be fair, like, there's probably a trilogy fight there with Brad Pauls if he loses with Nathan Heaney. And there's probably a rematch there for Denzel Bentley should he lose with Nathan Heaney. So there is a lot to play for for you know both guys in this fight. When you look at the undercard, Adelaide versus Dacus, Sam Noakes, Ryan Walsh, Lawrence O'Cody's heavyweight debut. It's a really, really good, solid card. It's really, really good. It's really, really solid. Frank Warren, obviously, this weekend, he's got a show on, which is going to be headlined by Liam Davis versus, um, I think, Masood, um, Shabazz Masood. It's not as strong, obviously it's not being sold as a Magnificent Seven, but it's, it's not as strong a card. Still a good main event. He done that show in the York Hall in Bethnal Green that was headlined by Sam Gilly. That was a good fight. Then you had Courtney Bennett, Nick Webb, Tommy Fletcher losing. But you look at the card and you're looking at these, even the smaller shows. I'm not looking at the Saudi shows because, you know, they are just extravagances. We don't really, yeah, and obviously they're shared. They're not just exclusively Frank Warren. He might be the lead promoter, but it's not exclusively him. And then, of course, you look at, you know, as I said, some of the other shows he's put on there. You know, he's had a few more in the Wembley Arena. He did, that Frank Warren? No, that was Eddie Hearn. But he's done, you know what I mean? He's done a couple. He's done a couple in the Wembley Arena. He's done a couple of shows this year. And they've been really good. And you look at Eddie Hearn. And obviously, Eddie Hearn isn't primarily, he's not completely just UK. He does the Saudi shows. He's got a show coming up in the West Midlands in Birmingham as well. Birmingham being a bit of a hotbed for boxing in the coming months and previous months. Sonny Edwards, Galal Yafai. And although I love the main event and I think it's good, you know, I look at the undercard and it's kind of, I know it's, it's a few weeks away. Something might change, hopefully for the better. But it's not... It's not what you'd expect as, you know, Eddie Hearn shows of old. And when you look at his box track, what do you notice? A lot of fights taking place in America and some in Mexico. So he, as he said, he's become more international than Frank Warren, who sticks to his roots in British boxing. But again, like when I look at it, when I look at Eddie Hearn and some of the shows he has put on, because the British market is where your roots are. And that's where you need to really focus on, in my opinion. You look at his show he did in the Copper Box, the Copper Box just out there. Johnny Fisher headlined against Alan Babbage. That was a good, well, it was it was entertain. It would be entertaining as long as it lasted. It lasted about thirty seconds. Reese Bellotti, Levi Guild was all right. John Hedges, Maisie Courtney Rose, Giorgio Vizioni. It's not quite the same as what Frank Warren's been doing, and I think it really highlights, certainly in terms of the UK the difference in their stable. You know, Eddie Hearn has signed some good fighters stateside. He's got Bam Rodriguez, he's got Boots Ennis, he's got Andy Cruz. These are good fighters to have on your books, especially Bam Rodriguez, because I think he is a star in the making. I mean, he is a, people in the hardcore circles, myself, we would consider him a star, but to the casual audience, he's not quite there yet, but I think he has the potential to get there. I think he is one of these guys who's going to come and become a u.s stateside box office attraction so he's really planned well with the likes of them he's really done well with the likes of you know as i said boot tennis because again i think he has star potential if moved the right way and then you look at the uk and you're like you know no disrespect to johnny fisher and i have a lot of respect for johnny fisher i think he's even someone who kind of knows that he isn't the best he's not the most highly touted 
you have Johnny Fisher who's headlining in the copper box how long will that last before he's ultimately beaten because I don't think his ceiling is particularly high and you contrast Frank Warren's heavyweight stable Frank Warren signed Moses Atelma who is six years younger than Johnny Fisher and has already been pro not even two years is already further along in his career he has Daniel Dubois he has Tyson Fury Daniel Dubois he's brought through from the very beginning you know, you have Lawrence Acoli, who Eddie Hearn, you know, by his own admission, lost a lot of money on. Frank Warren is now taking him on and is going to work with him. We'll see how long that goes. Fabio Wadley, who fought with Matrim for a long time, was always very, speaking very highly of Matrim, even when he fought David Adelaide, has now gone and is now working with Frank Warren. So Frank Warren, not just the heavyweight division, but you see his UK stable, it's got a lot of legs in it. There's a lot of life in that stable. There's a lot of fighters who you see and you think, right, potentially he can go this place, he can go that place. He can be the UK's next box office draw. With Eddie Hearn, I don't see that. I mean, his stable has been just shrinking and shrinking and shrinking in terms of depth. He is signing some good fighters. You know, Giorgio Vizioni, I think, is very, very good talent. He looks very, very good. But how long will it take for him to really, you know, start to make a name for himself? Sonny Edwards is... Is there or thereabouts, you know, in terms of talent, but you know, he's not a household name. And he's headlining against Galalia Fai and the undercard certainly at this minute in time looks fairly just meh. Now, promoters have peaks and troughs. I mean it's only a couple of years ago. I mean it's only about really I wanna say Frank Warren started coming to life a little bit more in kind of 2017 when he did that BT Sport as it was then deal. Because if you look at his shows in 2017, 2016, actually realistically, like you wanna go back and look at his shows when he went from Sky to Box Nation. They really, 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 like really went downhill very, very quickly. Apart from the occasional big fight, and I know he did Tyson Fury, Chisora too, but he wasn't Tyson Fury's promoter at the time, it was Mick Hennessy at the time. And that was on Box Nation. If the Klitschko rematch had happened, it would have happened on Box Nation. But again, that's working with Mick Hennessy. You are not the Frank Warren was never Tyson Fury's promoter at that time. He wasn't his promoter when he fought Klitschko. That again, Mick Hennessy, and that was on Sky, which was Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn was exclusive to Sky. Then I think Eddie Hearn was even out one of the press conference. In fact, Kel Brook was meant to fight on the original uh, undercard, which was meant to take place. The fight was actually meant to take place in October, not November. Fun fact: and Klitschko pulled out with an injury and pushed the fight back. And you know how things change, huh? How things change. Go fast forward nine years, how things change. But that was what Frank Warren he was having to try and piggyback off these promoters who had bigger fights, or piggyback at the big fights on Box Nation and hope that some of your guys can be on it. And he was really in a bad way, way worse than anything. Certainly, you know, Eddie Hearn is not in a bad way, but in terms of his UK shows, they're not quite there where Frank Warren is. But they were never as bad as some of the shows Warren was putting on way back in the day. He'd done the BT deal. He got Josh Warrington. He took a couple of the matchroom fighters, kind of lesser fighters like Tyrone Nurse. He had Jack Cattrall at the time. And he his biggest signer was probably Carl Frampton. I think he signed him in 2017. Yeah, I think it was 2017 when he signed Frampton. There, thereabouts, anyway. And yeah, roughly 2017, I think it was, just after he had that split with the McWiggins. And that was his biggest signer for a while. Then he got Fury... Dubois and Yard started becoming a little bit more there in terms of names. Dubois, Joyce. And that's when Frank Warren, things started to change. You know, he was in the doldrums for a long time. He'd seen some talented fighters. He'd signed some big name fighters in the UK, Carl Frampton and Tyson Fury, before he became the big star he is today. And then he planned for the future. And now he's reaping the benefits. And obviously Frampton's retired, but Tyson Fury making Frank Warren an absolute killing. Daniel Dubois, headweight champion of the world. Anthony Yard, everyone questions his logic not to stay with Queensbury. And it's not looking like it was a good move to leave. Frank Warren has not just built for the future. I mean, he's built for generations almost. This is a guy who has an insane amount of fight in him. I mean, there's just no keeping this guy down. Now, you look at Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn's not in that position, certainly not in the UK. He's got good fights, good cards coming up worldwide. But the UK is where his bread and butter was. The UK is probably where the majority of his followers, the people who would you know, support Matchroom and watch their shows, that's primarily where the fan base is. You know, he's not really, he's done well in America, but he's not a Bob Arum 
in America to say the least. Can Eddie Hearn turn it around? Certainly with the UK shows, can he turn it around to the point where he's rivaling Frank Warren? Because when they did the 5v5, the general consensus was that Eddie Hearn and Matchroom would win. Now I edged Queensbury because I looked at it on paper and I thought, ah, I'd give Queensbury a slightly better chance of coming out on top than I would Matchroom. But it all, I remember even saying in the video, I said it all depends on the KOs because it was extra points for a KO. It really showed where Eddie Hearn's roster was at. And having to rely on Deontay Wilder, a man who we had not seen eye to eye with for many, many years. And ultimately, the roster being taken apart. And some of them fighters were ex matchroom fighters, like Zile Zhang. You know, Zile Zhang KO'd Deontay Wilder and KO'd, not, not literally, figuratively speaking, matchroom in that. That made a 10 zip. You know, and it's just crazy to see the way it's come full circle and how things have changed. You know, 10 years ago was 2014, and Frank Warren. You go back and look at some of the interviews the IFL were doing back when it was James and Coogan. And you know, you people just ridiculing Frank Warren saying, look at what he's doing, blah, 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 blah. The shows are this, this, that, and the other. And you fast forward to 10 years and it's now the polar opposite. If you ask anyone, if you ask most fans in the UK, who would you say, Ben Shalom, Eddie Hearn, Frank Warren, who's the main kind of guy? The majority are just gonna say Frank Warren. It's crazy really to see how that's come around full circle. It's really, I, Frank Warren, I mean, imagine, and as well as the man's in his 70s, you know? It's not like he's in his late 30s, early 40s, he needs his business venture to succeed. Frank Warren could retire, could pass the reins on to George and sail off into the sunset. He's still at the helm. And he's still as ferocious as anything. And you can see it in George more so than Francis. I know George isn't, is a bit camera shy, but you can see he's got a lot of his dad in him in terms of that, you know, work, business everything mindset you can see George has that in a more so than Francis so Queensbury look good for the future what's the future hold for matchroom let me know your thoughts in the comment section below I hope you enjoyed the video people smash the like button if you could and subscribe of course if you haven't already peace